Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 6 The False Prophet. In our last episode, the Avatar and his companions had freed the Shrine of Valor. So let's go ahead and get on with the rest of the adventure. <sighs> One thing I want to mention um, that I didn't get a chance to mention last time, um, if you remember the blacksmith that we met in our previous episode, No Man, um, I didn't get a chance to mention he's based on a real-life person like many other characters. Um, he's based on someone named Jerry Self, who Richard Garriott um, was familiar with, uh, apparently through the Society of Creative, a Creative Anachronism. Um, in the SCA, Jerry Self played a character uh, known as Naughty Noman Bouchard. The Naughty, I can only imagine, based on some of the hijinks he must have gotten into. But, you know, once again, Richard Garriott included one of the people he knew um, in the game. Um, anyway, I'm heading due south right now because I want to demonstrate something to you. Um, in previous Ultima games, um, pretty much all the other Ultima games except for Ultima 6, the world is round. Um, in so much as if I sail as far west as I can, well, I'm going to come back around from the east, you know, so I could... I'm, right now, we're on the far southwest corner of the map. If I wanted to get around to the far east side of the map, I could just sail west and come back out the east side and kind of use that as a shortcut. Not so in Ultima 6, because as you can see, the world is flat and it's bounded by the ethereal void. Ultima 6 is the only game in the series where the world is flat like this. Um, for whatever reason, in the previous Ultimas and in Ultimas after this, it's once again a round world. Um, although you can also sail up to the north edge and come out the south, which isn't exactly how a real globe would work. Um, but Ultima 6 was different. It was a flat world, and um, that somewhat ties into the actual story, as we'll see later on in the game. But either way, that means we can't uh, take an easy shortcut to get to the other side of the world. We're going to have to sail there the long way. So here's the southern edge of the Valorian Isles, of uh, where the islands where Jelam's on. So we're going to sail east and head back towards the continent. We're going to go ahead and make our way um, around the southern edge of the main Britannia continent and try to head towards some more of these island towns that we can get to now that we have our ship. So we should be arriving at those islands any moment now. Um, again, once again, this will be a lot easier if we had a sextant. Unfortunately, we don't. But we will be getting one, uh, hopefully, you know, sooner rather than later. Now, if you have an Ultima 6 map, um, or if you can Google Ultima 6 map and you can follow along with us, um, I just sailed east from the very southernmost tip of the Valorian Isles. If you draw a line due east, you'll see that it intersects with some of these islands at the southern edge of the Britannian continent, and that's where we are now. So I'm going to continue sailing around these islands. And on the map, there's a much larger island um, at the end here, at the end of this uh, chain of islands. And we should be arriving at that island any moment now. I think that's this one right here. As you can see, we don't want to sail too far out of sight of land because we don't want to get lost. This is how sailors in the olden days must, uh, how they must have felt uh, before they had navigational tools to allow them to go further and further afield. All right, here's a dock. Let's uh, stop and take a look around. Now, those of you who played, again, who've played previous Ultimas will recognize this island um, as being the home of one of the three Keeps of the Principles. We already went and visited one in the previous episode. We went to Empath Abbey, which is the uh, keep devoted to the Principle of Love. Well, this is the uh, Keep Serpent's Hold, which is dedicated to the Principle of Courage. Let's take a look around and see what we can find. Looks like there's a tavern up here. Ah, and some folks are here. Let's look around and talk to some folks. You see a dignified man wearing a loose jacket decorated with a serpent. Hello, adventurers! As Guildmaster, I welcome thee in the name of the Order of the Silver Serpent. What is thy name? I am attentive. 
Well met, my lord Avatar. And what is your name? I am Coronada, son of Celebra. My father was a brave lighthouse keeper. And uh, those who played Ultima V will remember the many lighthouses that used to uh, surround uh, the continent of, of um, Britannia. An earthquake destroyed the lighthouse, else I would have inherited the position of keeper in Greyhaven. I traveled to Serpent's Hole to join the Order instead. The Order. We stand for the principle of courage. Dost thou wish to join the Order of the Silver Serpent? Well, sounds like something we'd want to join. I mean, we're all in favor of um, courage, sure. We would be greatly honored if thou wouldst join us, Avatar. Thy deeds speak well of the attentive. I shall waive the usual requirements, since thy adventures are more than sufficient proof of thy courage. However, thou must still create thine own shield. Shield, you say? The serpent shield of our order is a sacred symbol of our brotherhood and bravery. Our brotherhood of bravery. Its making is a magical process. Garrick the smith will help thee make one. Tell me about this process. <laughs> Tis secret as well. Oh, okay, I guess I must have to speak to Garrick then. You will most likely find him at the Siege Crafters. So you mentioned the principle of courage. Go and speak to De Hugh. Observe what he believes to be courage. Though he is a fine fighter, he has yet to prove himself worthy of our order. So while we're here, um, let's talk and ask him about uh, things like, you know, it's always good to ask people about runes and mantras. Without the meaning, such a symbol is just a meaningless scratching. We meditate on valor here. We meditate on it. A mantra is a concept, a special word to be turned over and over in the mind. When we meditate on a mantra, we do so in order to find the meaning of that virtue. The meaning. It is not enough just to know a mantra or possess a rune. In order to be virtuous, one must act virtuously. Hmm. Sometimes one virtue conflicts with another, though both be numbered among the virtues of the Avatar. The hero seeks to act with an awareness of these conflicts instead of merely following instinct. My teacher Connor taught me this. A dear friend, he was guildmaster here when I was in training. He lives humbly in New Magencia now. Hmm. It's pretty wise words, and those are things that we've discovered in previous games, that it's not enough just to follow one virtue. Valor doesn't mean just attacking everyone that's in front of us who's a threat. There's also compassion for weaker enemies and, you know, the wisdom of fighting honorably. We don't necessarily kill enemies that aren't evil if they want to retreat. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on with, uh, with exploring this town. Fare thee well. You see a large black woman with a loud laugh. Hello, hello, she cries, clapping her hands together. What can I get for ya? Well, what is your name? Amanda, but you can call me Miss Mandy. Okay, Mandy. There, that's much better. And what is your job, Mandy? I sell ale, mead, wine, ra uh, ma <laughs> excuse me, rations, and whey bread. Whey bread? How much is whey bread? Some say I make the best whey bread in these parts. It costs just two gold. You want to try some? Sure. Ah, I don't have any gold right now to buy some. Let's see how much rations cost. And they're four gold apiece, the same as they would have cost back in Jalam, so we're not going to get any right now. Remember to tell your friends about Miss Mandy. So she must run this tavern here. You see a man with a wide bottom. His voice is almost like a woman's. Oh, you look so thin! Here, have a bite of bread. He gives you a roll. It is still warm from the oven. He asks anxiously, Do you like it, my lord? Well, sure, I always like a nice roll. Have a whole tray, then. It's very generous of, this, of, of him. Well, what's your name? My name is Shubin, my lord. And uh, what's your job? I assume you're a chef? I am a cook, my lord. A cook? Being a cook is like being an adventurer, my lord. Okay, how so? Yes, my lord, I must gather up all my ingredients with care. 
so that I have the right ingredients, my lord. Ingredients. Adventurers are always searching for this or that, my lord. So are cooks. Do you know of Magician pastry? Can't say that I do. It is a marvelous dish, my lord. My friend Sandy gave me the recipe. Ah, Sandy, we met him back in Trinsic. He was a chef there. I'm only missing one ingredient. I'm sh I sure would appreciate it if you brought it back for me, if you came across one in your travels, my lord. If you could find time for old Shubin, that is. Would it be too much trouble to bring me back a dragon's egg, my lord? Dragon's egg? Uh, if we come across one, sure, it's not too much trouble. I just know you will remember Shubin, my lord. Thank you. So, you're looking for a dragon's egg. Have you one with you? Uh, unfortunately, no. Oh, do not tease old Shubin so, my lord. <laughs> so you know Sandy. He's my friend. Hmm. All right. Well, let's go ahead and be on our way, then. Let's see, does he know anything about mantras? Sandy says the mantra of eating is yum, my lord. Hee <laughs> hee. Your friend Yola rolls his eyes. Such wisdom we could surely do without. <sighs> let's be on our way. Goodbye, my lord. You see a huge, muscled warrior with a sad look in his eyes. He looks at you imploringly. What is it? What's your name? Sigalian of... Well now, that won't mean anything to you. And what is your job, Sigalian? If you mean my profession, I would have to say a knight of Ashtalaria. Can't say I've ever heard of Ashtalaria. A land unfamiliar to you, I'm sure. Just as unfamiliar as yours is to me. Yes, I was walking in the mountains of time when suddenly I heard a noise. It was dark and I heard this low growling, having just been released from Pildar's clutches, and I was tired and hungry. Mountains of time, you say? That is a great range of mountains in my land, wherever that is now. And who is Pildar? From what I hear, he is not unlike your mundane. Anyway, I peered into the darkness but could see nothing. Suddenly, a huge wall of blue flame appeared behind me. Blue flame? Yes, blue like nothing I had seen in any spell. Anyway, just as I turned, the creature leapt from the woods. It hit me with such force, we both entered the blue flame together. Ah, I think I know where this is going. Sounds like he entered a moon gate. Well, it didn't burn us, we just fell through to the ground beyond it. Beyond it. After struggling for a while, I finally managed to kill it. That's when I wandered into this community. The people of this land are brave and honorable. They fed and clothed me when I discovered that my gold was not the same as yours. I know it is a queer story, but true nonetheless. It's a queer story, all right. Yes, it is. Still, if I could, I would like to join you on your quest. Perhaps one of the people in your land will know how to get me back to mine. If not, at least I can thank your people by assisting you. Okay, so he has the potential for joining us, and we could probably use another strong fighter. Um, I'm going to hold off for a little while, though. We may come back for him. Um, it's good to know that Sigalian is here, willing to join us. Farewell. You see a tough-looking woman with a walk like a troll. She stares instantly at you. What's your name? I'm Morcella. And what's your job, Morcella? I be a retired sailor, that I am. Thou wert a pirate, says Dupre. Well, how rude. She turns up her nose and leaves. Let's try to talk to her again. So, Morcella, um, you, you were a pirate, says Dupre. I know nothing about that. She walks off in a huff. Apparently that's a sore spot for her, so let's go ahead and... Ask her about her job again. Ah, if we ask her, Dupre's going to keep accusing her, and it's not going to work. So let's just ask her about Sailor, being a sailor. So you say you were a sailor, Morcella. That's right, me bucko. Why, I've sailed with Lord British and Captain John. Lord British, you say? He walks with a limp, you know. Afraid of mice, too, he is. All right, already I think I'm doubting her honesty, but we'll go ahead and play along. You said you sailed with Captain John? He offered to marry me, but of course I refused. 
didn't want to be tied down. All right then. Um, do you know anything about any mantras? Don't know what to say about that, matey. We'll be on our way. So long, matey. All right, we're going to continue on our way here. Shamino hears something to the south. Let's see if we can... I don't see anything to the south. Probably something was down in the ocean. I see various people's houses. Uh, let's see what's over here. You see a tall and dashing gentleman. He greets you with an elaborate bow and flourish. Good afternoon, mon ami. Have you come to moi for instruction? Um, we hadn't really planned on that, no. You have but to ask, my friend. What is your name, sir? I am Monsieur Lubet. Touché, he wields his foil casually, lunging at an imaginary target. Much pleased to meet you, monsieur. And those of you who are familiar with the Ultimate Games will recognize Dennis Lubay, um, one of the artists who did so much of the um, art in the various books in the early Ultimate Games. Um, very, very involved in the Ultimate series and worked for Origin. Um, and your job, Monsieur Lubay. And of course, Lubay is based on Dennis Lubay in real life. I am the fencing instructor. So you are a fencing instructor. We, oui, I teach the fencing here in my salle, my school. It is very difficult sometimes. Most fighters, they have no subtlety, no finesse. He turns up his nose and sniffs aristocratically. But you, you look much better than that, my friend. Just ask and I'll give you a lesson. So you said touche before. That simply means touch. In fencing, we score by touching the opponent with the foil tip. They are blunt on the end, see? The first third of the blade, near the handle, is forte, strong. It is good to parry with this part of the sword. The rest of the blade is foible, weak and flexible. The foil, she is a very delicate thing. There must be much skill, yes? You must hold the sword like a living bird. Too loose and she flies away, too tight and she smothers. Just right and... She sings very sweet. He strikes metal and the foil makes a pleasant ringing noise. Shing! <laughs> so you said you know, you'd give us a lesson if we had but to ask. Lubay hands you a foil and a mask of golden mesh. He shows you the correct stance, then you spar for a bit. Now the offhand, my lord. Mon dieu, you are, how do you say it, ambidextrous. Very good, my friend. Monsieur Lubay is a skilled teacher, and you feel like you've really learned something. Let's go ahead and say goodbye to him for right now. Au revoir! So I want to check something. 18, 26, and 19. I, I just want to talk to him one more time and see if he'll actually help me. But no, you are too skilled. I have nothing more to teach you. I, I meant to check my stats before I talked to Monsieur Lupe and see if fencing with him actually improved them at all, but I'm, I'm sure it was worth it. Would he join us? I kind of helps you with that. All right. So that's Monsieur Lubay, a fencing instructor, very skilled uh, swordsman, as it were, and he was more than willing to help us by giving us a fencing lesson. And this looks like an armory, so let's speak to this gentleman. You see a tall man covered with scars and drooling uncontrollably. What do you want? Uh, what's your name, sir? Garrick. Ah, Garrick. He was the one that we're supposed to ask about making the uh, magic shield to join the order. Are you learning how to speak, or do you need something? Well, what's your job, Garrick? I makes the most hideous weapons. Hideous, you say? You ain't the sort what'd be interested. 
I got some other stuff you could buy, though. Alright, let's see what you have. I's a great craftsman, I is. Me shop is huge. You'll have to be more specific. Arms or armor? Okay, well, what kind of armor does he have? A black shield, a door shield, scale mail, a spiked collar, spiked helm, or spiked shield. Not particularly interested in any of that just now, but let's see what kind of arms he has. Ah, halberds, <laughs> hammers, morning stars, throwing axes, and two-handed axes. So a lot of the really heavy, the pole arms or the two-handed weapons that uh, really use strength more than dexterity, uh, they really are all about hitting and hitting hard. Slower but more powerful weapons. We won't buy anything just right now, but um, let's go ahead and ask him about that um, about that shield. Huh? Oh yeah, the serpent shield. He looks around and then at the ceiling. I need a snake shield, a chunk of gold, and a magic gem. Have you got these things? Unfortunately, I don't. Come back when you do. What else can I get you? Hmm, let's see, do you know anything about any of the other people in town? Uh, let's talk about Amanda. She's got the best food in the land. Go see for yourself. And what about uh, Mr. Segalian? A fine warrior, new to this area. All right, let's see if we can go ahead and get those items that we need. Shut the door on your way out, he snarls. So we needed to have a, a, a snake shield, a piece of gold, and a magic gem. Now, Dupre has one of those shields, and I'm sure he'd be more than willing to donate it to the cause. Unfortunately, we don't have a gold, um, a piece of gold. We just have gold coins. And I don't think we have any magic gems right now either. So we may have to hold off on uh, joining the order right now. Which is fine. It's not really a pr I don't think it's really a priority for the Avatar to be joining any orders right now. I'm going to drop this ale over here because we don't need it. Okay. But there might be something to do if we pass back through this town later. We might go ahead and join that uh, Order of the Silver Serpent. Looks like a guardhouse here. And this looks like the keep. And this would be the Holy Brazier with the Flame of Courage, where uh, the uh, Shadow Lord of <clears throat> Cowardice met his uh, untimely end. I don't know if I should really call it untimely, uh, you know. You see a commanding presence, a tall warrior in black armor. He stands and bows to you. My lord, art thou a warrior? I'd say yes we are. Good. I see courageous warriors to accompany me. Courageous? It is foolish to be courageous unless one is backed by a well-trained force of fighters. Or unless one happens to be the Avatar, I imagine. Funny you should mention that. I heard at the guild that the Avatar was in town. Well, I, I can second, I can vouch for that. <gasps> Coronada says I will be considered for membership when I have done something noteworthy. Have you ever done aught worthy of note? Well, you know, I like to be humble, but I gotta be honest, yeah, I think I have. Then surely Coronada has heard of ye. Tell him your name and he may invite you to join the Silver Serpent Guild. So, uh, tell me more about Mr. Uh, Coronada. He is firm, but fair. He does not wish to see any unworthy person bear the silver serpent blazon. A blazon is a shield marking, such as a serpent. I believe the silver serpent is a quick and highly venomous creature. So, I, I never quite got your name, sir. Who wants to know? Well, me. Attentive. Well, attentive. I am Baron de Hugh. Ah, this is the gentleman that Coronado wanted us to ask about uh, his thoughts on uh, what courage means. What's your job? I am a mercenary now. Mercenary. 
First I shall gather an army. I plan to build my reputation as a great fighter. My army and I will kill the mighty demon, Sinvral. Um, okay then. He is a malevolent creature, lowered over numerous servants who crawl about the desert. It is on the northeastern tip of Britannia. Look it up on a map. Well, this guy sure seemed to have it in, have it in for that uh, demon that we uh, used to know <laughs> back in Ultima V. That, that, that's at least two people we've run into who want to kill Sinral. If we run into Sinral, we may have to let him know about these people who are out, out for his head. Jeez. Good luck, my lord. It seems this guy's ideas of courage are all about getting a bunch of people uh, and just going out and killing things. Not exactly what we've come to understand as uh, what's meant by the Valorous Principle. Certainly, fighting bravely is part of it, but not just going out and seeking fights for the sake of fights. You see a muscular knight. He speaks in a raspy voice. Greetings, my lord Avatar. Thou art most welcome in my castle, Avatar. He bows deeply to you. And your name? Call me Simon, my lord. And your job? I am the lord of Serpent's Hold. And again, for those who played previous games, you'll remember that Sir Simon and his wife Tessa were the lord and lady of a of a uh, sorry of a keep called Border March. Um, now it looks like they're the lord and lady of Serpent's Hold. They're also based on real life people. Um, in the SCA, uh, it's very likely that Richard Garriott knew of these people, because in the SCA there was a Sir Simon of the Amber Isle and a Lady Tessa of the Gardens in the Border March um, region of the SCA. So it's probably pretty likely that uh, Sir Simon and Lady Tessa in the Ultimate Games are based on those real-life people. So now you're Lord of Serpent's Hold. Um, tell me about mantras. I personally favor the Mantra of Valor. I taught it, taught it to the bard Colhem in a song. He spends much time in Jelam, though he be a traveling bard. Uh, well, we met him, and he told us the uh, mantra. Yes, there's no telling where one might find him. As I said, though, Jelam is a good guess. And what do you know about runes? If I had a rune, I'd wear it proudly. But others fear for the safety of such important talismans, hiding them in some peculiar places. I wonder if tis considered theft to seize a rune laid out for all to see. I think he's referring to the um, question of the rune of honor, which was laid out uh, in the town of Trinsic that we took. Good to speak with you. Goodbye. I hope that will visit me again when thou hast time, friend. And I'm guessing this must be his wife. You see a well-dressed woman. Ah, my lord attentive! A sailor from Britain said thou had returned to the land. How glad I am to see that it is true. And your name? I'm Tessa. We met during thy last quest, Avatar. Strange that thou didst not recognize me. I would have hoped the year, past years had not taken that much of a toll on me. <laughs> so you're here with Simon? He is the lord of this hold. And what's your job here? I am the keeper of the flame of courage. I also help my husband Simon run this town. How fortunate we were to come here after the earthquake. Now this is the just another in a long series of references to earthquakes, both in Jelam, we were now told that the uh, lighthouse was destroyed, um, as well as um, apparently there was an earthquake that happened with uh, Tessa and Simon. It looks like there was a lot of upheaval that happened after our last visit, after Lord British was rescued from the underworld. So you keep the flame? You'll find many courageous fighters here. Tell me about that earthquake. After thy last quest, there were many great earthquakes. The island of Border March sank into the sea along with our keep. Only through great fortune did Simon and I make, Simon and I make it off the island alive. I guess, I guess that's the cost of um, our victory was all of these upsets, but um, either way, I, I guess it was worth the cost. You know, we brought Floor British back safely, so. Farewell, Avatar. Be brave in thy quest. Go ahead and move the scarred out of the way, if we can. We'll go ahead and get out of here. Now it looks like night's starting to fall.
So we're going to have to find ourselves a place to rest quickly here. Looks like there's a locked door here. I'm going to see if Fiolo can open this door. Ah, looks like it did work. Let's see what's in here. Ah, it's just another part of the keep. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and pass out, uh, get as far away from town as we can here, just so we can go ahead and rest for the night. And we'll have the Avatar stand guard. It looks like we had enough, we actually had picked up some food and Dupre was able to eat and he healed, so that's great. Let's head back into town, or back over to the keep, and see if there's anybody else that we missed before we uh, head on our way. I'm going to go ahead and wait really quickly in this spot. It looks like there's a sort of a almost a council room in here where there's a lot of different seats. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that seems like a great place for everybody to come and assemble in the town. I figure if we wait here for just a little while, we might go ahead and meet some people by waiting here. We'll go ahead and let a couple hours pass. There's Simon and Tessa. Hmm, I'm not seeing anybody else show up, so... <laughs> Let's see who this is. There's Coronada again. And, you know, this is a bit of, um, from having played the game before, this is a little bit of knowing what's coming ahead. There's actually somebody specific I'm waiting for. Um, but if that person doesn't show up, that's fine. We can, we're, we'll be coming back to this island later on in the game. We can always meet that person at that time. Well, it looks like everybody's leaving the room now, so we're going to go ahead and go on with our uh, journey here. If we can let everybody get past here. Looks like they got stuck by the uh, guard. <sighs> Alright, we're going to head back towards our ship really quickly. So heading east out, um, away from the town, from the uh, Keep of Serpent's Hold. If we continue heading uh, due east, that's the end of the islands there. We're eventually going to uh, run into another island. And basically I'm using landmarks to determine where I am. Once again, paying attention to the map. This is the island that uh, Lord Blackthorn's castle was on um, in the previous game. 
Now we're going to steer clear of that for right now because I, I don't want anything to do with uh, whatever dark uh, magic is still involved in that place. Now we're going to go ahead though and head, head north from there. Because we're using these um, landmarks to try to just, you know, find our way across the ocean. Again, lacking a sextant, uh, this is really our only hope of finding our way. Oh, it looks like we're about to get in combat here. We are in trouble here. Apparently our ship was poisoned according to the uh, information we just saw. Alright. Let's go ahead and get out of here real quick. It still thinks that there are enemies near, so it's not letting me rest. And as you can see, my hull strength is only 55%. I need to continue to rest to get my hull strength back here. There we go. So the crew went ahead and repaired the ship at sea, and now we're back up to full strength. Alright, according to my map, this should be the island uh, where the town of New Magencia uh, sits. From here, we're going to head a little bit further to the north. Oops. We're going to continue on our way a little bit further to the north. We will eventually be visiting the town of Numagentia, but there's one place that we need to go first. Um, before we end this episode for today, I just want to go ahead and uh, get over there. And we'll head a little bit more to the east. And sort of do a sort of uh, diagonal. As we make our way to the northeast. Here we are. If I'm not mistaken, this should be what are known as the Verity Isles, uh, the islands on which the town of Moonglow sits. So let's take a look. I think there's a good yeah. Here's a good spot that we can go ahead and let our um, perfect. We can go ahead and let our ship here uh, stop here. You see a wise, scholarly woman. Good afternoon, Avatar. For what purpose hast thou come? Well, what is your name? I am Zhao. And your job? I serve on the Council of Wizards. I also teach spells and sell magical reagents. Ah, that will be very useful. You serve on the Council of Wizards? Tis our task to keep the forces of magic in balance throughout the land. We also do what we can to promote the Eight Virtues. It's not an easy task. And, sorry, you promote the virtues. We created the shrines many years ago. Tharyand can tell thee more. He is the librarian at the Lyceum. Ah, the Lyceum. We were actually planning on visiting there. We need to go meet with uh, Mariah there. Surely that you know where the Lyceum is. Well, we have been there before. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and talk about spells. In which circle does Attentive wish to study? Well, let's see. Uh, in the first circle, let's see if there's anything that we don't have yet. Um, according to her, she sells a spell, sorry, Detect Magic, Dispel Magic, and Light. We have all of those spells already. What about the second circle? Infravision, Reappear, Telekinesis, and Vanish. We don't have any of those spells, um, but I don't really have any need of those yet. What about third circle? Dispel Field, Great Light, and Peer. Ah! 
if you remember from our previous episode, we were going to mi- visit that enchanter who lived in the woods, but there was a lot of magic fields in the way, and we didn't have Dispel Field. Let's go ahead and buy that. Ah, a tent of lax is 75 gold required. Not for long, he doesn't. We'll go ahead and move 75 gold from Dupre. Oops. To the Avatar. Good afternoon, Avatar. For what purpose has that come? Your example inspires us all. Aw. We'll go ahead and buy the spell field really quickly. Zhao hands attentive, a piece of rune-covered parchment. Thou art always welcome here, Avatar. Oops. So we're going to go ahead and move this spell into our spell book. We now have Dispel Field, so we can now go ahead and visit that enchanter if the time comes. So this is the town of Moonglow, the town of mages. A town based on the virtue of honesty. Because if there's one thing that um, the use of uh, magic requires, it's perfect honesty. You know, seeing the world through unclouded eyes as it is. Before we quit for the day, though, uh, I'm not going to go ahead and explore the whole town today. But before we quit, I wanted to make one stop here. In the great... In, in a third great keep, um, known as the Lyceum. The Lyceum, if Empathabi was a keep dedicated to the principle of love, and Serpent's Hold was the keep dedicated to the principle of courage, the Lyceum is the keep dedicated to the principle of truth the principle from which honesty directly derives. And right here is the Flame of Truth, where the Shadow Lord of Falsehood was vanquished. Now we were told by, um, um, sorry, excuse me, we were told by Nystol the Mage that we should go ahead and seek the Mage Mariah, who was at the Lyceum, um, to go ahead and help us to translate that Gargoyle book. Um, unfortunately, Night's Falling. Let's go ahead and see if we can rest really quickly. Avatar, you go ahead and stand guard again. One of the advantages to being the Avatar of Virtue is you never need to sleep. And let's rest for three more hours. And let the sun get fully up. All right, let's go ahead and return to the Lysam real quickly. And let's see if anybody's here. There's some of those fields we were talking about. Apparently there's something in, down a ladder that's being protected by magic fields, but we're not interested in that right now. You see a freckled young lady with an enchanting smile. I'm sorry to put you to the trouble, but I'm only supposed to help those who know the ways of magic. So I have to ask you a question to test you. And here is the second part of the copy protection for the game. Uh, Mariah asks us to look in our uh, compendium, the rule book that came with the game. What does the magic syllable her mean? Well, according to the book, that means wind. That's right. Now then, what can I help you with? And your name? They call me Mariah. Now, again, Mariah is one of the eight companions of the Avatar. In this game, she can't join you like in all the other games. Um, but she is the companion associated with the virtue of honesty. And she is, once again, based on a real-life person. She's based on Michelle Cadell, who was Richard Garriott's personal secretary at Origin Systems. Um, strangely, in this game, um, she acts as if she's never met you before, even though in Ultima 4 and Ultima 5, she was one of the people you could bring with you in the games. And same thing in Ultima... I don't think she joins you in Ultima 7, but she, again, is always known as one of your companions. I'm the newest member of the Council of Wizards. Somebody has to keep things running smoothly. In my spare time, I use the library to pursue my own studies. They get so caught up in their work sometimes that they forget even to eat and sleep. Just like the Avatar, they never sleep. (laughs) Such things matter little to them. They often dwell apart from the realm of the senses. Aye, indeed. Hmm. And you say you're in charge of the library? It is the finest library in all Britannia. I study many different things, but I find learning old languages the most interesting. One can learn so much about how our own language developed. 
All right, um, let's go ahead and ask you about that book that we that we found, the book from the Gargoyle uh, Sacrifice. I'd be glad to look at it for thee. She examines the book. Oh, I've seen this script before. I have part of an ancient silver tablet in my study with writing both in our language and this. I've only I've learned only a little from studying it, but I can make out a few words. The title is The Book of Prophecies, and it says something about the end of our world. If only I had the other half of the tablet, perhaps I'd be able to decipher the rest of the book. End of the world, that sounds a little ominous. I think that's important. Um, so you said there's another half of the tablet? I got my piece of the tablet from some gypsies who I met at a pub. Mayhap they can tell thee where to look for the other piece. Bring both pieces of the tablet here, and I will tell thee what I can. All right, so this book says something about the end of our world. We were wondering what these gypsy, sorry, what these gargoyles were up to, coming and capturing our shrines. Um, if it has something to do with the end of our world, that's pretty dire, um, and I think that takes priority. We need to find the other um, half of this tablet and find out what this book exactly says, so we can find some way to stop this. But we do have one lead: the gypsies who we've met before gave her this tablet and may know where the other half is. Fare thee well. So that gives us a path forward. We need to head back to the mainland, track down those gypsies, and ask them about this tablet, um, and see if we can find it, because we need to get this book translated as soon as possible. And that's a good place to stop for today. In our next episode, we're going to begin tracking down this new lead. We're going to put our quest to free the shrines on hold until we can figure out exactly what's going on with this uh, strange gargoyle plot that perhaps has something to do with the end of our world. Um, and hopefully we can put an end to it. Either way, I will see all of you guys next time.